Good afternoon and welcome to the Warrior Soul Podcast. My name is Chris Albert and I am now your co-host. A few months ago when I started this podcast, um, I was in the midst of, I guess, what you can call the entrepreneurial struggle. Um, over the past year, we've built Warrior Soul into what I can say now is is a pretty well-known military brand. Um, we've been focused on our mission of producing outstanding products for our customers. We've been focused on our mission of trying to inspire all of our brothers and sisters to live their best lives. But at the same time, you know, I had to look at myself in the mirror and ask, am I doing everything I possibly can to fulfill the second part of that mission, which should be the first, should be the first thing I think about waking up in the morning. And am I doing the best I can to add to this society, to, to help people to be their best selves? And the honest answer was no. You know, I've been designing t-shirts. I've been putting these t-shirts out there. I've been putting out content, but there is so much more we can do. And there's so much more we all can do. So on today's episode, our 20th episode, we're making a little bit of an announcement. And I'm happy to say that, one, I'm bringing on a business partner. And two, we are expanding our mission. There is a world of tools out there that can help you to live your best life. There are things that people are working on, research that scientists are doing, products that are coming out that can literally change everything for you. Ideas, beautiful, wonderful ideas that you can learn, beautiful, wonderful ideas that you can implement in your own life today that can help you to live better. And we're planning on bringing that all to you. But I needed the perfect person to work with. I needed somebody who shared my ideals. I needed somebody who has already given his life over to this mission. And so I'm happy to say that I'm wel welcoming Andrew Marr, the founder of the Warrior Angels Foundation, former special forces operator, Green Beret, to the leadership group here at Warrior Soul Apparel. I guess it's no longer Warrior Soul Apparel. We'll just call it Warrior Soul now. Andrew, welcome. My brother, Chris, I am truly honored to be a part of this mission. And, uh, you know, we did a podcast a few months back and we started to get to know one another and uh, develop our relationship. And, and through that, you know, it became very apparent that our values were aligned and uh, that our vision for the future matched one another. Uh, and, you know, we have this passion inside us to uh, live in a peak state of purpose and fulfillment uh, that's realized through love and by contributing and performing to the best of our abilities in the service of others. And that's the direction we're taking this now. Uh, with my background in special forces and now with the Warrior Angels Foundation, uh, which is leading on the cutting edge of TBI and post-traumatic stress uh, care, which uh, essentially is able to rewrite that analysis and bring people back to their pre-injury status. And uh, don't take my word for it. You can check it out at our website over there. But what we have access to, like Chris said, is the top experts in neuroscience, the top experts in health and fitness, top experts in veteran-specific topics, new mind-expanding topics. And I'm not even going to drop what those could be, but they will expand your mind. Uh, you know, exciting things in sports and recreation and, and with health and fitness um, supplement lines and talking about it, all this from firsthand experience. You know, that's what we want to deliver to you, uh, our listener, 
you know, and you will be able then to take that and say, okay, this can apply to my life and make it better. Or, you know, I, I'm not interested in that, but you're going to have access to premier cutting edge Intel. And that's what we're excited about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I was really excited when you came on the show the first time and, and I'm, I'm even more excited to, to bring you on here because what you've done so far in my mind with your charity is you've been one of the few organizations that has actually come up with a solution that has presented something that can work. We're not raising awareness. We're not, you know, and, and, and not to talk bad about anybody, but we're not doing exercises to wait, raise awareness. We're not, you know, just talking about ideas. We're, when I bring someone like you on, you're somebody who's taken action, somebody who's actually come up with something that can actually help people. And that's actually proven to have an impact on people with TBI, on our brothers with TBI. And, and for that, man, I, yeah, my eternal admiration. I think that's such yeah. an amazing thing. Well, you know, what we both are, uh, what, what warrior soul is, is we're solutions based. You know what I mean? Not complaining, not pointing out what, uh, it's not going right or what we wish was better. If you don't like it, you fix it plain exactly. and simple, plain and simple. And that's what we're going to be bringing to our audience ways that you can fix a multitude of uh, operations in your daily life that will improve your quality of life, improve your marriage, improve your children. That's what we're talking about. That's real change. That's real impact. And you know, Chris, we were talking and what kind of what spurred the uh, talk that we had last week in Los Angeles, we were speaking at a conference together was, um, you know, what was the foundation? What I've seen now is we can, eliminate somebody's uh, problems, their neurochemistry. Um, so say somebody has inflammation of the brain, we can get rid of inflammation. We can balance their hormones that are produced in the brain that aren't working properly anymore. And we can deliver them back to a, a homeostasis, a balance in life. But if that individual doesn't take control of his, his or her thoughts, their emotions, their actions, what they communicate, what they put in their body, then at the end of the day, it's not going to get the job done. It's a, you need a complete package. And that's, again, what we're going to be able to deliver. So what I have and I want to read, what I want to read here is uh, what I call my standard of performance. And I wrote this, uh, this is kind of my value set, uh, my ethos uh, statement, if you will. And I put the pen to the paper after my last appointment um, because I wanted to make sure that my kids would have something to live by. Uh, you know, at that time, um, I was still thinking I was going to remain an operator uh, for the rest of my days until, you know, we had the issues with TBI and had the medical retirement. But uh, that's why I pinned it. I pinned it because uh, I said, you know, I want to leave this behind. I want to have a mission statement for my life. And so uh, this is it. It's called My Standard of Performance. The real measure of life is how the race is run. Triumph and disaster are only byproducts. To run the best race, one must cultivate a process where a laser-sharp focus results in the capacity to plan, prepare, and perform to the best of one's abilities. British philosopher author James Allen wrote, We are what we think. Our character is the complete sum of all our thoughts. Whether you believe you can or that you can't, you're right. You cannot control what happens to you in life, but you can control what you will feel and do about what happens. And so in one way or another, you can shape your circumstances. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, neurologist and psychiatrist Victor E. Frankel said, Our primary motivation in this life is our personal search for meaning. His experience as an inmate of a concentration camp was a catalyst for his discovery of meaning in all forms of existence even the most horrific. History reveals the presence of a relentless search for meaning amidst great tragedy, suffering, genocide, and more. If you have a big enough why, you will always find the how. A conscious effort to perform at one's best in all things, at all times, in the pursuit of meaning yields unlimited opportunity and fulfillment. 
Further, I believe purpose and fulfillment are ultimately realized through love and how we give to others. In this way, placing others' needs ahead of our own and consistent acts of selflessness provides for the kind of meaning and success we can only begin to imagine. When things become hopeless, and even when they are not, find a way to make what you do about somebody else. And I found, Chris, that when I follow those general guidelines and I shift the focus away from myself and towards becoming selfless, everything around me improves and things flow effortlessly. And I can see the benefit in my family's life and my marriage with my children and people I come across in contact with strangers. You know what I mean? And um, that's what you mean to me. That's what this podcast means to me is again, another way for us to offer and bring these type of values, not only from Chris and myself, but from the, you know, experts in their field that we come across on a daily basis, basis, bring that knowledge in a uh, entertaining and uh, a way that be, can be easily comprehended again. And uh, that's why we're doing this. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. You, you just went down to the marrow of what we're trying to do here. And, you know, one of the things that I've, I've said that I said since I started this journey is that no matter where you are in this world right now, no matter what you're doing, no matter what kind of state you're in, it's never too late to take charge of your life and to take charge of your circumstances. There's nothing bad that can happen to you in this life that can remain bad. And what I mean by that is you can learn from everything. You know, the, the greatest lessons in my life have come from some of my most, what would be surface negative experiences, you know, being homeless, you know, going through a divorce, going through a rough childhood, suffering from depression, suffering from sadness. These are the things that teach us how to adapt, how to learn and how to overcome. And once we're able to do that, we're stronger, more resilient people because of it. And dude, that, that was just absolutely beautiful. And what I get from that and what, what our purpose here is, is one, to bring you amazing ideas, absolutely amazing ideas that are going to change your life or that could change your life if you keep your mind open to them. Now, you know, when we go through life, sometimes we live in a tunnel. Sometimes we're not able to see the awesome thing off to the side that could really impact our productivity, could really impact our relationships, could really impact our happiness. And so what we're going to try and do here is, is to take a little bit of time each week just to expose you to some of that stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're, we're going to give you some tools. You know, if you want to incorporate more of this stuff in your life, if you want to incorporate uh, more productivity, uh, better relationships, more happiness, uh, more education in your life, we're, we're going to give you the tools to do that. And, and the third thing we really want to do here, and this has always been a primary goal, is to give back to the veteran community, um, to take what we learn from these experts, from the – from what we get from our uh, civilian counterparts and to bring it back to our brothers and sisters to help them to live their best lives. Yeah. Amen, brother. And, you know, I loved what you were talking about earlier and it basically is we want to give you the ability to take control of your thoughts when you can take control of your thoughts and not be controlled by your thoughts. That's, that's when you're starting to rewrite these programs that no longer serve us. And I, I can remember distinctly uh, a troubled time in my life when uh, I was going through all the de neurological deficits of a TBI and we had some life-threatening illnesses uh, with some of my children, you know, and I was there at my son's hospital bed and uh, mixing opiates and narcotics and uh, drinking, you know, airplane whiskey and 
I came to a crossroads and I said, this is going to go one of two ways. I can continue to go down this track, uh, continue to blame my circumstances and talk about what I'll never be able to do again and how I've lost this and how unfair this is, or I can decide to act. I can decide now to take control of my thoughts again, take control of my actions, align my thoughts and my actions, and actually affect my circumstance. Instead of waiting for a cause and effect, I'm going to cause an effect. And that was a turning point in my life. And, you know, that was able to lead me on the path to find Dr. Gordon to get help. And now, you know, through the proper treatment, I'm performing as good, if not better than my pre-injury status. But it all goes back to what, what you're saying. Like, your only significance of our subjective experience is what we attribute it to, okay? So what that means is um, something ha- same thing happens to two different people. One person, you know, 20 years later, they say, wow, why has your life turned out horrible? And that person would say, it's because 20 years ago, this thing happened to me. And it ruined my life. And that's why 20 years later, you still see me in this same state. And what that really means is that person has not grown or expanded or matured at any level in 20 years. And then it happens. So you look at somebody, the same thing happens to them. And they live a life of purpose and fulfillment and service. And you go back to them and you say, wow, 20 years ago, this awful situation happened to you in your life. How is it that you are able to lead uh, a life that is changing other people's lives? How is it that your family and you are so happy? And what I found is that person will say, you know, what I once thought was the worst thing that ever happened to me is the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm so grateful for that experience because I had to draw on my perspectives. I had to look for new information. I had to think about doing things differently because the same thoughts, the same actions produce the same results. And again, when you can take control of that, you can take control of your thoughts instead of being, uh, you know, controlled by them. You can become an observer of thoughts. What I was trying to say, you can take control of your life again. And Chris is a prime example of that through his trials and tribulations. So again, somebody who, who could have said, you know what, I've just decided to continue to wire my synapses and my neurons in my brain to the same old emotions that I'm going, uh, that I'm living through every day. And when you do that, and I've seen this a lot in the veteran community, and that's why I'm happy to speak about it, is when you think the same thoughts, when you bring up past experiences that don't serve you, you have now created a physiological chemical response in your body that is the equivalent of what you went through at that time. So if you continue to think about things that are not serving to you, that are akin to the stress responses that are elicited from a fight or flight mechanism, then you're going to continue to live at a lower quality of life. And again, that's because we know in, uh, neuroscience has told us is neurons that fire together, wire together. And what that means is once I learn some new information, whatever it is, I have an experience and I continue to think about it through a memory and I relive that emotion. Again, I've now just brought that emotion to the present day. And that's how an emotion goes into a mood which you keep that mood going for a while, goes into a temperament. You keep that temperament going on for months, and that now turns into what? It turns into a personality trait. And now you've just memorized, it because of your thoughts, a traumatic event that's being relived every day in the present. You're being haunted by your past by bringing these thoughts up and living in the present. And again, this is all, this is not woo-woo stuff. This is all very well scientifically proven. And so if we know that neurons that fire together wire together, we also know that neurons that no longer fire together no longer wire together. So how do you change your thoughts? Well, first you have to become conscious of them. And you can do that by taking a step back and realizing, hey, is what all this chatter going on in my head, is this serving to me? 
Is this helping to inspire and empower myself and everyone around me? Is this helping me to live the life that I want to live? And if it's not, you need to examine that. You need to examine that emotion and follow it back to its root cause and realize what that emotion causes you to think, causes you to say, causes you to do. And you'll start to realize, my God, I would never consciously want to do something like that. And nobody consciously would because you're being run by a subconscious program that's been wired in your brain. So again, we're going to give you information like this and the tools how to offset and reprogram program patterns that were downloaded into your subconscious, probably without your knowing because a majority of our habits and emotions and patterns are downloaded between uh, nine months uh, and the age of seven because um, you're at the, the delta and a theta state there for the brain waves. So anyways, um, some interesting, fun neuroscience facts for you for the day. But, um, you know, that's, that's, again, how we're going to be able to shape our circumstances and understanding the mechanism at a level where we can all understand it and give it some practical applications about how to apply this to our lives. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, just to bring this back to, to some personal experience, you know, and this is probably a story that, that many people out there would be able to relate to, but, you know, when I was just getting out of the Marine Corps, um, I was in a relationship with a young lady and I thought she was the love of my life. And, you know, I came back to, to, to Connecticut and, and wanted to start a life with her, but I wasn't acting right. I wasn't, was not acting right at all. And, I was drinking. I was drinking probably five, six, seven nights a week. Um, I was really just an angry, and I can say this now, disgusting person at the time. Um, I was uh, out womanizing all the time. And then one day she smartened up and she left me. And so immediately I descended into this kind of spiral where I kept telling myself and that the person she left me with was a gentleman from uh, my high school football team that I was friends with. And um, she, uh, you know, I, I kept telling myself the story in my head. This is so unjust. You know, they, they've been playing in this for months. I can't, I can't believe how happy they are together right now. I can't believe what's going on. You know, I, I, I can't stay in this town uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to head off to California. I'm going to show them, you know? And, and, uh, so I did that and the whole time I thought moving thousands of miles away was going to take those thoughts out of my head, but it didn't. I sat there and I was, you know, um, all through my time moving out here, I was like, oh man, I wonder what she's doing right now. I wonder if they have kids. I wonder what those kids look like. And then one day I was thinking about it, you know, I had been, been, still drinking. I was still, you know, messing around. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I said to myself, dude, what are you doing to yourself right now? You're not actually living your life. You're, you're, you're living in hate. You're living in a mental hell right now. And every single th bad thing that's happened to you over the last five years, that's been your fault, Chris. Right? You brought this upon yourself. You're the reason why you're so depressed right now. And I said to myself, all right, from this moment, I am going to put this to bed and I'm going to actually live. And when I look back on it now, and it's, it's not that easy to do this when you're in the moment, but I look back on it and I say to myself, if that never happened, one, I, I wouldn't be sitting here. Two, I, I would have never moved to California and, and got into all, some of the amazing experiences and opportunities I have out here. Um, three, I would have never met you. And, and four, I would not never met the girl who right now, the love of my life, you know? And so for all you guys out there who are suffering, who, who are literally suffering right now, feel like you can't get any better for yourselves, you know, the biggest thing I could say to you is that someday you're going to look back on this as a really valuable lesson. And that lesson is either going to come from teaching you not to do things that you used to do, or it's going to give you perspective on all the awesome things that you learned from this experience. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I want to, I want to say that, um, 
man, that, that was from the heart, Chris, or that really resonated with me, you know, and suffering when you get down to it, most of the time is self-induced and, uh, it, it takes some introspection to, to be able to understand that. But again, you know, it's, it all comes down to how you want to tri- attribute meaning and significance and what kind of life are you wanting to live? We're not meant to live in states of suffering. Uh, you know, no, no, uh, no being is, is made to do that. We have this limited fight or flight state that elicits uh, a certain chemical reaction to handle uh, things in a limited uh, for a limited time frame, and then we're supposed to. We need to go back to a homeostasis. Humans are exceptional beings because we can elicit uh, chemical reactions just by thought. And when you start to understand things like that, and you start to think, "My gosh, uh, I'm bringing on all these undue uh, emotions and feelings that, at the end of the day, aren't doing anything to help me." And so, being able to identify that is the first, is that first win, you know, that that's going to get you on the right track saying, okay, Hey, I, this doesn't serve me. This isn't loving to me. This isn't loving to anybody. Uh, I, I don't want to be ruled by what it is, is fear and fear then goes into other down regulated emotions that don't serve us. And so, um, isolating that, finding the antithesis and the antithesis, the antidote to suffering I found is gratitude and service, service. So, you know, if you're suffering, find a way to make it about somebody else. See, see what you can do to put your time and value into somebody else. I guarantee you that will put value back into you. 100%, man. And, you know, that's the biggest thing. And, and, and I tell young entrepreneurs this cause I, I coach entrepreneurs in, in different venues, but um, I tell them this all the time. You want, to be successful in business, you have to be in the business of helping other people. Uh, because regardless of what that business is, if it's going to be successful, you need to be solving problems. You need to be taking care of issues that people have. And you need to not be thinking about yourself and all the money you're going to make. Um, you know, it's, it, it's got to be about the value. And then the other thing is living in gratitude, like you said, that entails not just being grateful for, you know, the, the, the awesome things in your life. You've got to be grateful for all the bad things in your life too. You know, you've got to tell yourself every time something bad comes up, every time, you know, you miss the bus, you got to figure out a reason to be grateful for that. And the reason that you have to figure out a reason to be grateful for that is because you have to understand the lesson that you're getting from it. You know, you, you miss the bus. Well, Next time, you're going to be on time. You, you face the consequences that, you know, your boss yells at you because you're late or you get docked some pay or something like that. Be grateful for that because it taught you the value of being on time. You know, yeah. there's too much feeling like, you know, we're being mistreated. We're being treated unjustly. All the world is against us um, on this planet right now. We have to get rid of those ideas if we're going to if we're going to be strong. And we're going to do great things. We need to get rid of the idea that the world is against us because it's not. The world is just here to test you. And the world has always been here to allow those species that are excelling to thrive and survive. And unfortunately, the world also gets rid of the weak. And when you start blaming everyone else, when you create a culture of blame for yourself, um, that creates weakness that breeds weakness, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you're de evolving and, and not growing when you're in that state. But I think, uh, what it comes down to is choices. You know, what, what life is about, what free will is, is the ability to decide what choice we're going to make and whatever that feedback loop or mechanism is from that choice it's another opportunity to understand okay i can't i shouldn't proceed with the same actions the same um thoughts because that choice lead led has led me all my life to these results so start thinking about choices as an incredible opportunity to get it right and don't beat yourself up just look at it as feedback 
take the feedback, take the data and say, okay, I'm going to make a better choice when I'm confronted with this situation next time or a similar situation. Choices, you know, choose better choices. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this whole system better, more organized, structured, going towards love and away from chaos. And when you're in the habit of being conscious of your thoughts, having your thoughts and your actions in alignment, making right choices, knowing that every time you have an opportunity to make another correct choice or a better choice for you and your family at that time, that's how things start to improve. And they will improve dramatically if you can apply those simple principles. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in, in for those of you listening right now, um, Andrew goes through most of his story uh, in episode 15. And, and I want to just ask Andrew a question right now. Um, you know, you, you made a, a conscious choice to understand that you had a problem at the time, right? And you made a conscious choice to, to do the research um, that was required for you to come to the solution that led to you um, solving your issues with traumatic brain injury. Um, and, and for those of you who has, hadn't listened to the episode, um, like I said, Andrew was a special forces operator. He was a breacher. And he was exposed to explosion after explosion on a daily basis. And, um, you know, his brain was literally shaking and quaking inside of his head. Um, and that caused uh, a good bit of inflammation there. And after a few months of being home, Andrew's personality started devolving. He uh, was getting depressed. He was, uh, you know, dealing with so many negative experiences. There was a time where I don't think Andrew could walk in a straight line because of, of the issues he was facing. What was the point when you said, I am going to solve this problem, right? You might've covered it in the last time, but I'll, I just want well, to. Um, a great question. It goes back to kind of this, our central thesis and it's understanding your why and why, what I mean by that is your purpose, your mission, what's your, what's your own reason, uh, for being. And it's, uh, individualized, um, uh, thing so everybody is going to have their own and you know what it, it uh it is for everybody whatever you make it to, out to be and so what i realized when uh you know i was told you know hey you, you can't face another uh head trauma you know you can no longer operate my entire identity was wrapped up in being an operator and before that it was an athlete and I had a complete loss of identity because all of a sudden I, now I have this, you know, so-called medical condition and I can't do what I felt was my purpose, my mission, my why. And, uh, life was spiraling out of control. It's on 13 medications, you know, uh, double, double blurry vision to double vision to balance issues to all the neuropsychological behavioral issues like we talked about. And, it, it got to a point where I was just like, this is, this is going to kill me. And I, I, I remember a neurologist uh, at a functional, uh, functional neurologist that I was talking to. He said, you know what? You've had a lot of head trauma. There, there's no doubt, doubt about it. But the rate at which you're drinking is going to kill you quicker than anything else. And so what's more important? Your family, your five children, or having another drink? You know, and I was like, you know, oh, it's, it's my family. He's like, if it's your family, then the next time you sit down and you think that you want to have another drink, you better have, you're going to have to decide what's more important. Is it your family or is it having a drink? And that was October of 2014. And I've been sober ever since. And from that day, you know, again, I realized that I had the power to choose. I had the power to uh, choose how I would receive, internalize, and respond to the external stimulus and the factors in my life. And that, and I got tired of, I was unhappy with the medical system. Um, I was unhappy how my family was treated. I was unhappy how I was being treated and things just weren't adding up. The level of care wasn't adding up. Uh, the information I was getting wasn't adding up. And so, you know, that, that then pushed me when I made that decision to, you know what, I'm going to get better. 
that's my new why. And, um, you know, I realize, okay, I couldn't be, I'm not going to be able to be an operator anymore, but I'm still a man. I'm still a husband. I'm still a father. And my new drive in life was, I'm like, I'm going to get off these 13 meds and I'm going to be the man that my wife and my children need me to be again, the man of my the standard of performance that I wrote about earlier. And doing that started to put me back on the track. And that's where I came to the realization, you know, I thought my life was being about being a Green Beret. Before that, I thought my life was about being an athlete. But when I looked to it, I realized what it was really about, what those, um, what those identities afforded me was the opportunity to belong to and serve something bigger than myself. So those weren't my whys. That wasn't my, you know, my sole mission in life. That was just my purpose at the time. That was a vehicle that was able to drive me to fulfillment. And it's not about success. It's not about attainment because at the end of the days, at the end of the day, those will leave you empty and, uh, you know, wanting more, being on the top, still wanting more. And so realizing that and saying, you know what, I'm going to free purpose myself. And that is going to be the key factor that's going to allow me to live a life of fulfillment again. And then when I started focusing on the things that were beautiful in life, my life became beautiful instantaneously, you know, and uh, we haven't looked back since, but, um, that, you know, that, that was kind of the decision point. And, and uh, that along with uh, what I said earlier, being at my son's bedside and, you know, saying, you know, I can't believe I'm, I'm sitting here popping, uh, Dilaudin and, uh, drinking, you know, whiskey. Um, but uh, I was doing it to try to, to cope because I, I didn't know how to at the time. Um, but again, what I thought was what was once the worst thing in my life was now the absolute best thing that's ever happened to me, Chris. And I, and I mean that with, with all my being. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, a week, uh, a week or two ago when we were together over in Los Angeles, you know, we, we heard some people talk about synchronicity and, and synergy and um, just commonalities amongst people and spirits and things like that. You know, I don't have, uh, I, guess, I guess I could say that I have the, a similar experience to you surfaced on the surface, but I have a similar experience to you, I think, spiritually and I say that because one, you know, my, my experience abroad with the military, I look back on it like it was a cakewalk. You know, it was, uh, I, I, I didn't go through half the things that a lot of our brothers did. Um, at the same time, I also know great loneliness. I know great, uh, defeat. And, um, I've been in places mentally where I felt like, I had nothing left. Like I had no spirit left to give. Um, and, and to some extent, a lot of that was based on guilt, you know, guilt that I didn't go through, um, as much as, as some of the guys I knew, you know, uh, a good friend of mine was shot in the face in Fallujah, um, a year or two after I got out. Uh, and, uh, my old commanding officer was killed. And, uh, you know, I lost a couple other friends and I'm here going to school and I'm saying to myself over and over again, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve anything. And I, I would make these lies up to myself saying the hell I'm going through right now. I deserve it. I created this, you know, um, the, 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 the reason why that girl left me was because I decided to get out. You know, and, and uh, I know there's a lot of you out there who are, who are telling yourselves right now, I, I just don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve any of this. I don't deserve life. I'm just going to sit here. And I got to tell you all, you do deserve good. You do deserve love. You do deserve success. But the only way you're going to get it is if you come to terms with the fact that you deserve it. You know, it, 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 Andrew was talking about um, how his family needed him. 
you know, how his family needed him to be the man that he could be in order to survive and to thrive. And, and for all of you out there, even if you don't have a family, we need you to do it. We need you to do it. We as a society need you to be a man, to be a woman, to base your problems head on. If you look at, and I'm not going to get into politics here on this podcast, but if you look at the country itself, the, the lack of leadership, the, the, the lack of direction that people are having these days, it's because a lot of us are lost. A lot of us aren't taking full, full charge of our lives. And for all of you out there, you, you've been in leadership positions, you know, especially the veterans who are listening to this podcast. You've been in leadership positions. You've been in situations that most people out there have not and will not experience in their lives. And so in some ways, it's your obligation to step up and come to terms with yourself. It's your obligation to care enough about yourself to know that you deserve all the good that comes to you. And um, that could be you come to real, that realization through family. That could be you come to that realization uh, by going out there and looking at what some of your brothers and sisters are going through by looking at some of the suffering in the world that's out there and by understanding that every one of us has to do something to add some value to this earth if we want to really find meaning. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. And it, it's, it's about self-love. And if you don't have love for yourself, then how can you give or do to anything or anyone else? And I'm not talking about going out and getting a manicure or a pedicure or buying a sports car or something like that. That's pleasure. You know what I mean? That's not self-love. Self-love is taking control of your thoughts and raising your internal state to be greater than your external world. When you do that, when you can have an elevated internal state, regardless of your external circumstances, you, you have self-love. And now you're moving to those other elevated states of selflessness, of contribution, of performing at incredibly high levels. Um, and that is what self-love produces. And let me tell you, Everybody has a right to it. There is no culture, creed, color, nationality, uh, you know, political uh, association that has a, uh, a cornerstone on this. This is something that can be had by everyone. And I believe that's our natural state of being. And the world has deprogrammed us to become almost uh, just materialistic and thinking about it's how much can I get? And that, that when you focus on those things, you're living again in a stress response. You're focusing on things that are selfish, revolving around the self, not loving the self. And I couldn't agree with you more, Chris, on that, on that point. Absolutely. And, and another thing is this, and you mentioned this, the, the idea of having a lot of money or that you need a lot of material objects to, to be happy. And in some ways, I think that this is almost a, a plague on our society, the idea that materialism brings happiness. Um, one of the things that I found is that you don't need much to live like you're a millionaire. You don't need much at all. You know, I, I, after coming out of living, you know, in, in my car and, and going through, through some of those experiences, what I found is that experiences mean everything and, and having a good more morning routine, for example, right. Uh, waking up, getting a good breathing session in, getting a good exercise session in, getting a good meditation session in. Um, and, and I know that some of you think meditation is hippy dippy, but being able to create those experiences for yourself when you wake up and 
for example, you, you, you open up your, your tin of coffee and you get that first whiff of coffee in the day and, and, you know, you hear the whistle of water boiling and, you know, you're, you're about to, to taste your first sip of coffee. That to me is worth a million dollars. You know, th- those types of experiences, being able to, to feel like I've put work into myself in that morning. Uh, to, to become better. You can do that. You don't even need a gym membership with, for that. You can do that with burpees. You can do that with a good morning walk. You can do that, um, you know, with some calisthenics. Uh, and you can do that, like I said, through meditation. Uh, there's so many things out there right now that you could do immediately that could have an immediate impact on your life. So so my next question for you, Andrew, is is – what does your morning look like? What do you What do you do to to get yourself ready for the day and to to get out there on your mission? Well, um, I have a, a number of, of things that, that are important, but I'll also I'll caveat that before I jump into the routine is that in no way uh, is my morning routine uh, predicated on the success of the day. So if something happens and I can't do it, it doesn't throw me off. Uh, it, it doesn't change anything. It just means that some situations or some circumstances arose that um, I needed to take care of, you know, immediately. And you know, uh, I think we'll get we'll talk uh, about sleep in later episodes. But um, you know, I put a high priority on sleep, and I used to just beat myself up if I didn't get up at 4 a.m. Uh, regardless of if I went to bed at 2 a.m. or not, you know, or I got eight hours or not. Uh, and again, we'll go into uh, some of the sleepness and everything else and further podcasts. But if I know that my sleep has been compromised, then being a leader, uh, you have to understand if I do get up at four and I know that now I'm going to perform at a lower level throughout the day, I've just made a poor choice. And so I choose to get the, the right amount of sleep so I can wake up and perform at an optimal level. But uh, my war- morning routine, as I like it, is right now I do get up uh, around 4 a.m., uh, somewhere between 4 and 4.30. I have a sleep system that uh, wakes me up based on my uh, brain waves. And so uh, instead of waking us up in a deep sleep, being a delta or a dream state, being a theta wave, uh, it knows to wake me up in it. I'm in an alpha wave. And what it does is it allows me to not be in a fog uh, because that's when you wake up and you're still not awake and you're not awake for a long time, that's exactly what would happen. You probably woke up to an alarm and your body was in a delta or a theta uh, brain wave, dominant brain wave state, and it's literally taking uh, you know, maybe hours for your body and your mind to warm back up and come up to a level where you can uh, start, you know, producing cognitive, uh, good cognitive abilities. Um, so that, that wakes me up uh, in a 30 minute window. So I, fi- I say, okay, what's the time I want to wake up? And then I back it up 30 minutes. And so I, somewhere in there, it's going to wake me up based off of my uh, EEG readings uh, off that. Uh, from there, I go right into a meditation. So I immediately put on uh, some wool socks, sweatpants, and a sweatshirt, and I go through about a 75-minute uh, meditation. And what I do with that is it works through some breathing exercises and, and some priming, and then I identify things in my life that are not serving me, and uh, I try to really go inward and identify where those are coming from, how, how I act, how those cause me to act, how those cause me to think, how those cause me to behave. And then I think of put myself in several scenarios where I will now be aware when that thought, when that emotion, when that negative association, whatever it is, comes into play. And um, I'll tell myself immediately, change. And uh, that's my trigger to stop something from progressing. And so I'll go through things that are in my life that I don't want to be there, that aren't loving or serving to me. So after I've identified that and I've worked through those through the meditation, I now will uh, go through the process of creating my ideal life and future step by step um, from uh, everything that I think is uh, the way my life should be. And then I associate that 
with uh, a feeling of gratitude and I wrap it up in, in an emotion that leads my body to think it's experiencing what I'm thinking about in the present. What that does is it's, you got to understand some, some things about the body. And as we, you know, we are essentially, we have a physical body and we have an energetic body. If you look at the, uh, we took a microscope and we looked at, uh, focused up on the arm and going all the way down to the atomic level. Uh, the atom is 99.9 with 12 other nines percent empty space. And then point, zero with 12 other zeros, 0.1 percent particle. And what I'm saying is, is that, um, under understanding that at the subatomic level, uh, uh, we are, we are energy. And then, uh, that, that is actually broadcasted, um, that energy through our body and through electromagnetic field. And so our thoughts actually produce an electromagnetic field. They can read thoughts not only with the EEG, like I was talking about earlier, but something called a MEG, a magna cephalogram. And what that means is that they can use a magnet to read your thoughts without hooking up any wires to your brain. They can read them in the field that's outside of your skull. Very interesting concept. So we start to understand our thoughts produce uh, electric, electrical signal. Um, our feelings through the body, our emotions produce a magnetic signal, electromagnetic field. That's where it comes from. And so realizing that uh, what we think, what we feel actually gets projected into the atmosphere, into the quantum field, if you will, if you will um, we're projecting that information out there. And that's why the, uh, the law of attraction says like attracts like what that means is exactly that. What you focus on, what you think about, what dominates your thoughts and your actions, it, you bring into your life. And so that's why it's important for me that first 75 minutes of the day to eliminate things that aren't serving me to rewrite how my future is going to be and then broadcast a signal that shows that I'm grateful and I'm experiencing it right now. And guess what that does? That tells, uh, that sends that signal out and that brings that signal back. And so that's how we can manifest things in our life right now. And that, that's the meditation process, uh, that, that I've been doing, uh, lately. And it's really been a phenomenal uh, aspect and, and improvement uh, to my life. I've been meditating for about two years now, but I've just recently gone to uh, this uh, method, and it's uh, it's. I don't want to give anything away, but it's from a neuroscientist that uh, we'll probably have on the podcast here in the near future, and he can tell you more about this stuff firsthand. But uh, after that meditation, uh, I go through some, uh, I warm up my eyes. So uh, I go through some eye movements, uh, warm up the joints, uh, then I, then I head to the gym. Uh, from there, I have a, a normal routine I do. And then by that time, I've got the things that I need to do for myself, which allows me to be able to fulfill my duties and responsibilities for the day. It's like uh, when you're on the airplane and uh, you see those emergency airbags come down, they say, you know, put the, uh, put the airbag on yourself first before you apply it to a child. Well, the reason is, is if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not going to be able to take care of that child. So, you know, it took me a while to be able to come to that conclusion, Chris. And it was like, you know, I feel bad if I'm taking time out, you know, for myself. But I realized that if I don't do these things, if I don't set myself up for success, as I see it this way, then I'm not going to be able to take care of the other things I need to take care of. So uh, going through that routine right there uh, is what I've found right now has set me up for optimal performance throughout the day. I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I love – also waking up at, at zero four, I haven't been as good about the sleep as you yeah. have. And we've discussed that amongst ourselves, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am probably one of the worst people with sleep because my sleep usually expands between, between, uh, four and five hours a day. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I've been trying to get better at. And recently I've, I've expanded it to probably about six and a half, seven hours. I haven't been able to get to the eight hour mark. Um, uh, but it, 
but it is really something that I've been working on. And you know what's important, Chris, is it's the quality of sleep. You know what I mean? So we can sleep for eight hours, but if we're stuck in a, uh, a light sleep and then 10% in REM and, and 10% in deep sleep, well, we really haven't maximized our sleep efficiency. And so, you know, you could be getting four hours, and guess what? You could be having that mostly in theta, mostly in delta. And wake up feeling great. And that happens to me all the time. So this myth of eight hours or, or whatever, it's, it's, you know what, it's individualized, you know, uh, how that person feels is the greatest indicator of it, you know? Well, absolutely. And, and what I found is that, uh, you know, I do a couple of different things, uh, with my sleep that, that helped me to have a better morning. Uh, one, I listen to binaural beats while I, while I sleep. Um, these are, these are just beats that you can get right off of YouTube or there's apps you can get on your phone. Um, they play different tones and, and they, they, uh, put your brain into different types of states. Um, and, and so, uh, these beats have, have really helped me to, to get better sleep. Um, I've been, uh, I, I usually take about 400, 500 milligrams of magnesium before I go to sleep. Um, and, uh, I've been, I've been experimenting with the, uh, with the secretropin which uh which is something that that we're going to be talking to all of you about as well but something that um uh that brings gaba which which stimulates the calming neurotransmitters in your brain and and really helps with uh with uh human growth hormone release while you're while you're sleeping and and uh suppresses somatostatin which will will keep you from releasing human growth hormone getting a good recovery sleep in has that had had any benefit yet have you noticed anything absolutely absolutely i went to bed Last night I got to bed about um, eleven fifteen, and this morning I woke up at zero uh, three forty five, and I popped out of bed. Yep. Um, and and uh, you know, I, I have a very similar routine to you, as you do, but but you know, I keep my room very dark, which yeah. is the thing that I do that keeps me keeps me in a good sleep, and uh, you know, I sometimes that can, can create kind of like a, fa- a cave effect because you're not getting light on you. You're not having that, that natural light waking you up. Um, but I, I just popped out of bed this morning. I had a clear head. I got right into my morning routine, um, you know, threw my clothes on. I throw, I like to get warm after I wake up, just like you said, with your wool socks. And then um, what I'll do is uh, a lot of times I'll go out on my patio and I'll sit there and just just get the get the air into my lungs, and um, I I like meditating, but I also like priming. Um, where uh, it's, Tony Robbins does a variation of it, where you you know you move your arms rapidly for periods of thirty seconds, then you go into a restful thought process, and then um, you do several cycles of that, and then you bring in um, positive thoughts, gratitude utter feelings of gratitude and then you envision that gratitude uh, coming into you as light and then coming out of you as light into the world and into the people who you want to impact the most and uh, then I do a bit of journaling and then I get a bit of physical activity in um, and that can be anything ranging from um, like a hardcore weightlifting session to you know a uh, uh, a high intensity cardio workout to distance running. And I know a lot of people say that distance running is bad for you, but it really helps me to clear my thoughts in the morning. It makes me feel good as long as you're, you, you're not doing tons of it. Um, and then, there are tools, right? You know, and it, it, mm-hmm. how can anybody tell somebody what, what's good or not good for them if it's not absolutely heating the being? And so, you know, what you're giving is awesome tools, you know, that people have choose to in, include or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I like to write. I like to be creative. Um, and I get a lot of creative work done prior to 8 a.m., you know, and, and uh, mm-hmm. that way I feel like I've done something. I don't feel like I have to rush and that, you know, when my girlfriend is up, I can have breakfast with her and feel like I've already gotten a great start with my start on my day and, and, and really have a good conversation with her and not try to rush her out the door or anything like that. So I can, can get on with it and stuff. And, you know, do I, you I, feel I, like putting yourself in that proactive mode as opposed to, you know, reactive or getting up and just checking Facebook or checking emails or check, checking text. I mean, how does that set you up? You think, uh, to better prepare yourself for the rest of the day? 
it, it, it makes me be more thoughtful about what I'm going to do. Um, because I think one of the biggest problems people run into is that most of what they do isn't actually for them. They're reacting to everything. They're, you know, you react to cell phone messages, you react to emails, you react to the news. You know, you, uh, people check, some people check like CNN.com like 30 times a day to see how, what, what news is up there. And, uh, you know, for me, one of the things I've learned to be able to do is to keep my phone on silent for, for most of the first part of the day and to be up for a while, you know, right now it's, uh, I think it's a little bit after 11 where we are and I still haven't checked my email today. Um, and the reason why I haven't checked my email is because I know that there's somebody out there who's trying to impose their urgency on me. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it's probably not really urgent, it's probably just something that, that, that can be solved in 30, 40 seconds. And, uh, you know, if I continue to try to solve those 30, 40 second problems throughout the day, throughout my day and, and, uh, and, and, you know, interrupt myself from my thought processes, from my flow to take care of those little things, then I'm not going to get anything done. Um, and so, I, I create blocks of time to look at email, create blocks of time to look at text messages and things like that. And, and that allows me to get a lot more done uh, rather than continually reacting to things and continually living in chaos and, and living in not my own chaos, but other people's chaos and the chaos they try to impose on me. Do you think setting up that precedent of, you know, not uh, responding immediately or living and dying by the email or living or dying by the text do you think that is able to condition people to not continue to put those things on you, you know, by a kind of like default? Absolutely. Absolutely. After a while, you know, the people get the idea. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, whether it's clients uh, and, and usually it's clients because I, I, I do coach and consult in fitness and, and, uh, and write programs for people around the world. They're all in different time zones. Um, I have uh, business, uh, I, I do some business consulting and I have people I work with around the world. Um, I'm working on a business class right now that has, uh, you know, I think 80 or 90, um, international students from every different time zone. So, um, I make it known to them that there is about 90 minutes that I work on this stuff a day. Right. And whether that's and, and answering emails or whether that's sending things out, sending things out that I want done. Um, and that that doesn't usually happen until later in the day. I want to save all my creative energy and save all my, um, my, my spirit for the stuff that I'm going to be putting out there. This stuff, the, the, you know, this type of stuff, having a, an amazing conversation that, you know, thousands of people around the world are going to benefit from, um, writing something that that is going to educate people creating products for for a business that is going to move the business forward working on the business and not in the business yep. you know and and uh, i i see that's a huge mistake i see so many new entrepreneurs do is they they react to everything they they're, they're they're putting out fires all day long they're um being technicians rather than being business people. And that's why they either stay in the same place or they feel like they're overwhelmed all the time and feel like they're drowning in water. And, and it's just little simple tweaks that you can do to the way you think, the way you interact with others, um, and the, and the way you carry out your day that can, can have such a huge impact on, on whether or not you're moving forward or moving backwards. Eliminating that unneeded stress, I mean, that can be all the difference between the top 1% and everybody else. You know what I mean? Is how we or, you know, set things up. Because if, if you're proactive, then you're going after the things that you have identified as you know, meeting your intent. And so anything else is going to fall short of that. You know? So I, I am a big believer in everything you just said, and, and I think we can set ourselves up by a success for answering questions like that before they arise. How am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna handle this um, when and if this happens? And already knowing that, already having a game plan set in place 
first of all, that takes away from the uh, cognitive fatigue and the cognitive load you're going to have to invest in the, in it at that time. And you say, nope, I've already made the decision. This isn't important to me because it doesn't line up with my why and my other goals, whatever it is for the individual. But, um, you know, I, I found that to be a huge benefit in, in my life as well, uh, in the life of my families and, and, and the foundation and everything else when, uh, you know, you can get out of that reactive mode because, again, what is that doing? That's eliciting a stress response based off a uh, threat, a perceived threat that doesn't really exist in uh, the physical reality that, that we live in. And, um, you know, that's where, again, we start to get into problems uh, when you repeat that pattern of behavior over and over and over again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um I think that you know one of the other things that uh, that people really make a mistake on is in thinking that they don't have any control over the day, right? Thinking that you know that I hear so many people t- people talking about, oh, I have so much stress in my life. I have so much, so so many things going on. So so many. Um, uh, um, hands on the fire. Um, but the, the thing is, yeah, I have to realize that no matter what you've chosen that, right. And you've either chosen to take on too much or you've chosen the wrong things. Um, and, and you just really have to be honest with yourself about it. I agree, man. It, you know, it comes down to what can you really control, you know, uh, outside of yourself, not a whole lot. So control that focus your energy on that and don't get, you know, I found out, you know, uh, with the foundation earlier this year, my happiness was so cheap because, Mm -hmm. uh, I would, employees or somebody else wouldn't be doing something the way I thought it should be done exactly. And that would throw me into this, you know, stress fit. And I realized, you know, my God, I'm allowing these menial, uh, situations just to ruin uh, my day. And at the end of the day, what is, what did it really matter? How many, you know, people do you think are going to be doing what I want them to be doing at every second of, uh, every minute of every hour, every day, Mm -hmm. that happens about zero times. So understanding that, you know, nobody's going to do something the way I, I think it should be done allowed me to kind of look at things differently and think, you know what, what, you know, does it always have to happen the way I think it should happen exactly? And if it doesn't, should that just ruin my day? How cheap is my happiness? Uh, And uh, that, you know, that allowed me to to come to these conclusions to say, you know what, Uh, I'm not going to let that rule me. I'm not going to let that rule my emotions. I'm not going to let it rule my behaviors. And so I'm going to affect what I can control, which is my attitude, my effort, my thoughts, things like that. And, and that's, that's when you start getting that, that upper hand, um, uh, without trying to get an upper hand because you're just living at a, at an elevated state. 100%, 100%. And, and, uh, you know, we all have to make that choice. We all have to tell ourselves how, wh- what's our happiness worth? Is it worth ruining your day over a little insignificant thing? Are you allowing yourself to live in suffering um, in this short time that we have on this earth because of some limiting belief that really, if you, if, if you break it down, is just a little tweak you can make in your life, a little tweak you can make in your perspective? Um, are we Are we searching for the things that can, you know, change our perspectives on these things. And that's what this podcast is going to be about, you know, giving you simple tools that you can implement that can have huge dividends in your life, in your performance and making you the person you want to be, right? Being the person you should be being the person you need to be, if you're going to fulfill your purpose here on this earth. And so one of the things Andrew and I were talking about uh, last night while we were planning this podcast out is we want to hear from all of you. Um, We want to hear what your struggles are. We want to hear what your problems are. We want to 
answer some of your questions here to 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 you know make sure that we're doing our jobs so i'm going to create two ways of doing this for this show um one i know that some of you out there are suffering from significant problems and maybe you don't want to put this stuff out there on social media so i'm going to create an anonymous survey on survey monkey and this the simple question is going to be what is your greatest struggle right now what can we help you with? Um, if you have a question for us, you can put it up there. The other way is if you have other questions that you think a lot of other people in this community could benefit from and you want them to see the question um, and, and see who it's from, um, we can utilize social media. And so you can go to our Facebook page, Warrior Soul Apparel, and I'll put links for that in the show notes for this episode. Um, and, or you can go to our Twitter account. Uh, which is Warrior Soul Gear. Um, and if you want uh, um, Andrew's personal Twitter account, what's your personal Twitter ha- handle, Andrew? Uh, it's at WAFTBI. It's at- Warrior Angels Foundation Traumatic Brain Injury. Yeah. Yeah. At WAFTBI. I'm going to put links for that in the show notes as well. Um, but we're here for all of you. You know, we want this podcast to benefit every single one of you in some way, whether we, we give you a thought that's going to have a positive impact on your life for, for the next few hours, that's going to make your day better, um, whether we give you a tool that can completely change your life and change the course of your life, um, whether we help you sleep better, help you work better, help you love better, um, help you create better, whatever it is, we want to have an impact on there. And we want to hear how we can help you guys. So, Andrew, any other things you want to talk about for this week? Uh, I, I think that's it, man. And just to add on to what you said, you know, everything that we aim to do, uh, we're, we're talking about from a place of, you know, personal experience, trails that we've already blazed and uh, lessons that we've learned, you know, and what's the pre- lessons learned and the practical applications. And then if it's an area that maybe we don't have that much experience in, Man, you guys are in for some treats because we have access to uh, just an incredible network of uh, professional professionals and subject matter experts that are literally going to rock your mind uh, in the in the best way. So, just could not be more excited to be a part of this as we uh, continue to ignite and start the revolution. Absolutely, and it will be a revolution, a revolution of productivity, of consciousness, and of leadership in this community. So I'm really looking forward to this and uh, I'm so excited about what's coming. So until next week, guys, this is Chris Albert and Andrew Marr with the Warrior Soul podcast. And we will talk to you next week.